Hey everybody, uh, I took a couple weeks off here because I uh, got a little backed up with work and with planning a wedding with my fiance for November. And I kind of also realized that like having a, a series called This Week in Movies that comes out like Sunday night or Monday morning even, depending on the time that I can shoot and edit everything and put it out, seems a little odd. So took a couple weeks, kind of tinkered with the idea, figured out what, what, you know, what would work better. And not surprisingly, the big idea is uh, we're going to John Oliver this. So welcome to Last Week in Movies. Let's go. Unfortunately, got to start on a bit of a downer note as we did lose um, two very, very different but very, very talented performers um, over the last couple of weeks. And I just wanted to take a second uh, and say rest in peace to Michael K. Williams, who was probably best known for his role as Omar in The Wire, and then he was also Chalky in Boardwalk Empire, and just a tremendous talent, and more than that, he was one of the the actors who you would always hear about, you know, giving back to his area and his communities, um, and to impoverished and underprivileged children. He was very, like, I, one story that really touched me um, was, uh, I want to say like a, a woman's hospital or a woman that worked in a children's hospital, something like that said that, you know, when you reached out to Michael K. Williams, you knew it was going to be a yes, like whatever you needed, or if you needed like someone to come to an event or anything, they knew that Michael K. Williams was always going to say yes and always going to be there to help however he could. And you know, even even more than the, the tremendous body of work that he left with audiences and for everyone to enjoy, um, I think, you know, you could feel the, the passion and the energy he had to paying it forward. And that's, you know, that's a that's a heavy loss for um, for society and for those communities that he was such a big part of helping. And then earlier this week, we unfortunately lost Norm Macdonald um to cancer apparently he had been undergoing treatment for this for almost a decade and just did not tell anybody um i haven't seen anything about like if like his close circle knew or how many in his close circle knew but the news was was stunning because he's one of those those comedians that you kind of just are like oh he's really funny and he's like a, he's so consistent and constant he's always there he's always popping up in these other things like you would have never thought of course that something was wrong behind the scenes he never in any of his appearances that he kept up or the podcasts he hosted or anything like that you never um got a whiff of, of something going on and you know i think that takes tremendous courage and moreover um it's amazing to think that he was as funny as he was still i think you know losing a comedic mind like norm mcdonald is a huge loss um, it's very safe to say that the world got a little less funny with this news. On the other side of things, Christopher Nolan has worked with Warner Brothers since he started his career. And last year, the release of his film Tenet and the clashes he had with Warner Brothers were apparently severe enough that he decided for his next movie, he is leaving. He left Warner Brothers after, I want to say, two decades of a working relationship together, at least, um, to make a movie about uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, who was the inventor of the atomic bomb. I don't know what the, um, the time gimmick is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be like every day in the lab is 24 hours on the surface and 18 hours in space or something. Like, who knows? Who knows what the the um, gimmick is going to be? But there was a bit of a bidding war for him for this movie from these studios, from competing studios, because it is a big deal that he left Warner Brothers because, you know, he was like, Tenet has to come save movies. Like, we have to save the movie theaters, open the movie theaters so Tenet can play. And then they kind of did that and kind of played it in theaters. And it didn't do too well because we were in the midst of a global pandemic. And then he came out and was like, how dare Warner Brothers do this? So kind of an odd, odd hill for him to die on. But far be it for me to, to be the one to say that. Um, so his list of, of demands came out. Like he was Motley Crue in the 80s that only wanted brown M&Ms in the bowl. <laughs> so here we go. 
So, according to the Hollywood Reporter, the suitors and studios would need to meet some requirements. He's targeting $100 million for this movie, which he calls a smaller scale budget compared to other projects. So $100 million for a J. Robert Oppenheimer movie. You know how good those effects better be on that atomic bomb testing sequence. Like, that shit better blow you out of your chair in the theater. So he also requested, here we go, this is where it gets good. He also requested an equal marketing budget to the $100 million production budget. So that's a $200 million uh, budget right there. As well as total creative control, 20% of the initial first box office gross, and a blackout period from which the studio would not release another movie three weeks before or three weeks after his movie. So that's seven movies or seven weeks of no movies from a studio except for Christopher Nolan's movie, except for Oppenheimer. I'm just gonna call it Oppenheimer. Who knows what it's gonna be called? It's probably gonna be called Atomic, something weird like that. So, oh, sorry, last thing. (laughs) And he requested a 100 day theatrical window, which means it has to be in theaters at least for 100 days before it's eligible to go to home video or streaming or on demand uh, because he just really hates streaming and on demand Um, so it came down to Apple Sony and Universal and Apple was like well we're a primarily digital company when it comes to our media and our content creation sorry Chris for that reason I am out And then comes down to Sony and Universal, and he ended up choosing Universal. Which means that whenever the Oppenheimer movie, whenever Atomic, Christopher Nolan's Atomic, is coming to theaters, we are not going to get another Universal movie for seven weeks. To put it into other, like, Universal is like the Despicable Me and Illumination Animations. It's Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, and that whole franchise. It's the Fast franchise. If this Christopher Nolan movie delays my enjoyment of the next installment of the Fast and the Furious franchise, I'm going to be pissed. Kevin Smith is a pretty jovial filmmaker, I feel, by his reputation and by his appearances constantly um, when he does media, when he does anything. He seems to be a pretty upbeat, positive type of guy. And I guess it wasn't always like that because he recently came out and talked a little bit more about working on the film Cop Out, which was a major studio movie that he did not write, that he was hired to direct with Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan. And it came and went and it must have, some shit must have really got down on that set because Kevin Smith now has said he experienced total darkness working with Bruce Willis specifically. So let me find his whole quote here. (laughs) He said, Cop Out could have been a great experience if it were not for the fact that I met true darkness in Bruce Willis. I love making movies and he does not at all. I think that that is incredible. Like, so he goes on to say like Tracy Morgan did a lot of improv and Bruce Willis didn't like that. And he said that he thinks Bruce Willis is lazy and that he thinks that he would have been fired uh, from the set if he had voiced any complaints because Bruce Willis was the biggest star on this. Like incredible, incredible stuff. And it's, it's just funny to hear all this and like people pile on Bruce Willis now because like The movies he's making now are like straight to DVD. He looks bored as hell even in the poster. And then he's only in it for like five, ten minutes. I read a review of one. They all kind of blend in after a little while when you look at the pictures. But uh, one of them, it said he was in it for like ten minutes. And he didn't stand up. He was just in a chair. (laughs) And I mean, you know, if they're going to pay him to come in and sit down and say some lines like haphazardly and bored, collect the bag, Bruce. Like, who am I to to say don't? If people will pay you the money to be lazy and phone it in, then you pick up that phone and you dial as many times as you can. 
in a story that is very important to um, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, really prepubescent and adolescent me, Tracy Morgan is going to join the cast of a long-awaited sequel, um, at least by me, it's been long-awaited, Triplets, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito, and Tracy Morgan as long-lost brothers. Uh, they're re-teaming with director Ivan Reitman, who did Twins originally over 30 years ago, and apparently it's getting put on the fast track, because when you get this type of cast, like, this shit writes itself, I'm just saying, like, I can't believe it took 33 years. Apparently the original idea was um, Eddie Murphy. And the whole movie was written for Eddie Murphy to be the twin, to be the triplet, I should say. And Eddie got busy and instead it's gonna be Tracy Morgan. And with um, Ivan Reitman, I do have faith in him as well. I think it, you know, bringing the director back is uh, like a good step to take, but it's also kind of um, really tough because it's been 30 years and when you wait this long to do a sequel it usually really sucks so i hope not i'm gonna just be honest and say that i'm gonna see it no matter what i'm gonna get in front of my camera and i'm going to make a video and i'm gonna talk about how much i enjoyed it no matter what i'll say you know i'll be objective as much as i can and be like yeah it was all right like it wasn't funny but it was cool to see them all or i'll be like yeah i laughed a little bit at something but like i don't care i'm telling you now Arnold, DeVito, Morgan, I'm there. Take the money. I don't need it. I would much rather it go towards triplets. Let's go. Put it out. It's filming in January. It's going to get hot shot, fast tracked around the studios to see who wants to buy this masterpiece. And it's probably going to still come out before like Morbius. Because Hollywood is an endless vampire that takes ideas and former IP, sucks it dry and remakes it and reboots it in a vicious cycle of content. Uh, we have finally hit the point where they have decided to remake The Bodyguard, the uh, classic Whitney Houston, Kevin Costner love romance drama um, that still, I believe, holds the record for highest selling movie soundtrack of all time. Um, known for, you know, Whitney Houston's insane cover of I Will Always Love You, among a couple other of her biggest hits, are all on the soundtrack. Like, this was a huge cultural moment, this movie. And remaking it makes sense, I guess. Like, when you consider, like, it's a really popular movie, it's a well-known story, and it's going to have a built-in audience. But remaking The Bodyguard means you have to recast Whitney Houston who at the time this movie was made was basically like unassailably the biggest star in the world at the time. Everyone wanted to hear her sing. Everyone wanted to see her act. Like she was the biggest star in the world. And I don't think stars really like, I don't want to say are that big, but like it'll have to be like Beyonce or like Taylor Swift, like one of the biggest stars in the world will have to take on this role just to measure up in terms of like star power of the lead. Kevin Costner role is a little bit easier to um, navigate here. There's a couple suggestions. Someone, Lizzo, wants to be Whitney with Chris Evans in the Costner role. Um, and I just, I don't know about this. I think that this is going to be uh, a, a risky proposition here. To be totally honest, I mean, Chris Evans and Lizzo might be the best choice because, like, the dynamic of the two of them could be fun and flirty, and there's a lot of stuff in the original Bodyguard that just is inconceivable today. Mm -hmm.